So this has been requested many times um, about the baroreceptor. Our patient liaison, Linda, um, has asked me to do this. It's about the baroreceptor. So my analogy is for anybody with an autonomic disorder, especially POTS or, or any orthostatic disorder, to understand that baroreceptor is equivalent for a diabetic to understand how glucose or sugar is related to their disorder. So the baroreceptor is essential and a key aspect of understanding to why this occurs for you and aspects of also treatment and way of managing your disorder. So diagnosis, mechanism of pathophysiology or why you have the disorder and also treatment options. So in POTS, in orthostatic disorders, there's some very fundamental aspects to understand how the body behaves and um, normally, and then when it deviates from normalcy to abnormality or pathophysiology is a term for abnormality, and then also to treatment back. So fundamental concepts are, is that the body is always functioning in a state of that one earth. And we are always being pulled by gravity. Gravity is always pulling things downward and anchoring us down, mainly, especially our blood supply. So our blood supply is always being pulled by gravity. Pulled by gravity. And in normal states, it works flawlessly to push it back up. So there's always a pull of gravity downward. So in normal states, blood's being pulled and... Um, and mechanisms mainly with neurologic responses and then sinking the heart to beat, blood vessels squeeze, kidneys involved, works flawlessly and automatically and autonomically and reflexically. That's why all these terms get to be very confusing. Automatically, autonomically, reflexically without you thinking about it or being aware until something goes wrong. It happens perfectly. And usually most profound of this gravity pull is when you stand up, change positions, um, or often you can see this pull of gravity from prolonged sitting or laying down where the blood settles, the blood settles. Remember also, most of the blood is sitting in your lower part of your body in that big blood reservoir of your pelvis and your thigh muscles. So that's a big area of the blood sits in the pelvic area and that vascular supply there and also all those big vessels and capillaries and muscles in that area. That's why exercise is so important to help squeeze those muscles, get those muscles strong, help push that blood back up. So I do have a friend here and we will use this. It's not a Zoom um, fake screen to background. So this is an important concept here of what goes on here. So blood is being pulled down and I'm gonna pull this off here. These are the lungs. And so you don't have these little hooks in you, but inside the body, we are the vertical animals, like giraffes are another vertical animal. We are the vertical animal. A good percentage of the blood goes to the brain up here. And so blood's being pulled down, but there are sensors in the blood vessels up here called baroreceptors. These are sensory receptors that um, work as feeling that the blood is going flawlessly upward. Barrow means stretch. So the blood is actually dropping and going up normally, normally, then everything is filling the blood vessels normally. They're stretching normally. So that means everything's going well for blood pressure control, heart rate control. But what happens to people who have orthostatic disorder is that the blood's not circulating properly. If the blood's not circulating properly, that these receptors are not going to, they sense the flow's not happening, then there's messages that happen. They're not being stretched properly. And there's a signal that happens, actually goes all the way up to the brain. Oops, just lost the eye. <laughs> and it goes up to the brain where there's actually blood pressure and heart rate centers, which are very important because some level, if your blood's not flowing and your body's not getting in proper state, your brain needs to be notified that you're not right. That's going to create that sort of hypervigilance, can't think properly, 
you're not going to be able to multitask sequentially task. It creates that sort of jitteriness that we all say, not saying anxiety, but jitteriness. And also the sense impulses down from the brain back downward. It says speed up the heart rate to then compensate for the poor blood flow. So if the blood's not flowing upward, the heart's going to speed up. That's where the tachycardia comes, rapid heart rate. It can happen upon standing up, changing positions, or even just laying there. When you're laying there for a while, sitting there for a while, not getting the blood moving, the heart rate will speed up. That's why sometimes I always call this a Goldilocks disease, too hard, too soft, just right. Too much laying around can make you feel worse. Too much sitting around to make you feel worse. Like a long car ride can make you feel worse. But standing up, you can feel worse. That's why we just find that sweet spot where you are and then eventually improve you um, to medication, to exercise, wellness, to control it. So these receptors, if they're not flowing the proper amount of blood to stretch them and to stay stable blood flow, it was an impulse if we're not being stretched properly, say speed the heart rate, make the brain not make you aware that you're not right, and try to also clamp down on the blood vessels the best they can. It creates that sympathetic adrenaline impulse to say clamp down on the blood vessels so to stabilize. So it, it can work fairly well enough at times to keep everything steady. And steady, that sympathetic response. So many of you will notice that you might have a tendency for low blood pressure and that moments where the heart rate's up and then the blood pressure can spike. So you might start low, then high heart rate, and then spike of blood pressure. And then once you're stabilized, back to low. That's why a lot of these POTS subtypes are very tricky to know where you are because your biology and your physiology is constantly changing because of how this battery receptor is behaving. These baroreceptors are neurologic circuits. In the blood vessels that go to the brain, it's the impulses to the heart, to the blood vessels below, trying to compensate even to the kidney. They have signaling to try to control how much urine output goes and even how some of the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism, the RAAS system. You don't have to really worry about that in much detail for, for you unless you want to, but many of you will notice some odd urine output and swelling and potassium wasting in some of you occur, but that's some of that baroreceptor signaling to the kidneys um, that can happen. And that can also tie into some urine output issues, potassium wasting that you have as that baroreceptor signaling that occur. The thing about this is important is, yes, it makes sense why you want to have this signal in this baroreceptor, the blood's not flowing vertically because you want to get blood to the brain. The brain is the important organ, blood vertically going up. But this is like a neurologic signal um, circuit. The nerves are like circuits. It's like signaling. It's like a cell phone. It's like a cell phone. And it remembers patterns, algorithms, algorithms. So like a cell phone that you just get from an Apple store, or uh, T-Mobile, wherever you get a cell phone, it's empty. Within a few hours, it starts remembering patterns that you do, phone numbers that you do, things that you like doing. The internet starts remembering patterns that you do. If you go to a search engine or social media, it will start remembering things that you look for. If you go to any social media, if you, I always say this, if you look for the baroreceptors are remembering that you want to look for adrenaline. Your body is looking for adrenaline because you're constantly having this challenge of poor blood flow. So if you are, your body's always going to be triggered very easily, very readily in that regards. So almost like social media, if you're always looking for cute kittens on social media, social media is going to give you cute, cute kittens as the algorithm to fall. So these baroreceptors get very primed. The brain gets primed, but blood vessels get primed. So it becomes the algorithm. It's a circuit default, a, like neurologic system, a circuit default that occurs. So it might be triggered very readily by poor blood flow, but other mechanisms, menstrual cycle, stress, life events, a bad encounter, bad food, weather. And that's why we should start using medications to contain that adrenaline so it doesn't have to be so activated or we use exercise because exercise is a controlled stress and to, and to bring that system down not to fire so much or any type of wellness modality 
where you can show your brain and body it can be okay. And that's why some of the care is for the orthostatic patients is really is, especially in POTS, is to contain the baroreceptor, though it is activated to stabilize the blood flow challenge, its overactivation becomes part of the problem. So this is where this condition becomes twofold issues. Poor blood flow initially, then the body's response and the default of this algorithm of circuitry overzealous becomes the challenge. So it becomes many aspects of where the baroreceptor becomes part of the problem, this sympathetic over response. So most patients are going to need something to control blood flow optimization and calming down this baroreceptor. That's why it's so important to always embrace this disorder, not just as just filling up the blood vessels with salt and fluid and compression stockings people talk about and may work for some and others, but you got to work to contain and tame this sympathetic response. That's why it's so important to talk about this baroreceptor um, as a concept. I appreciate listening to this. I recommend listening to this video over and over again. We go through this many times in the share medical appointments and many of our other messaging to the patients. Um, we believe in you. We believe in teaching you. We believe in sharing information and empowering you. Take care of yourselves.